I'm sure we'll have a wonderful day with her today.
all, I want to welcome Marjorie for being so kind and come to our school. It's a, it's a great privilege um, to have her with us. And, uh, when, the, when the word spread that Marjorie is going to come on this Friday, as there so many of my veterans just decided to come and I see more veterans here than students. <laughs> and uh, and what is yes. And I hope Marjorie will have a good day with us. I hope Marjorie, after uh, being with us in the class, will have faith that what we do is that we are going in the right direction, which no one better than her knows. Uh, well, well, that's already, Misha. Huh? Yes. Yes, well, I believe you know now what's the right direction <laughs> for the Alexander um, And uh, as you all know, Marjorie Alexander himself was her uncle. And Marjorie, as a little child, started to have lessons with him. And uh, then uh, she was in his first teacher study course, with, uh, together with my teacher, McDonald. And when I came to, to um, in, my, in the beginning of the 60s, when I came to to be a student here in London, there were only three schools here. It was a McDonald's school, the Bauer school, as we used to call it, and the Carrington school. <coughs> whenever I remember, whenever I would mention to McDonald's... That's, that's it, that's uh, it's a tiny thing, but it makes all the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we mentioned to McDonald uh, about Marjorie Barlow, he was so happy, he was so happy. You could feel he's got a special feelings to her mom. And then only later on we discovered, shall I tell them what we discovered? <laughs> we discovered that McDonald and Marjorie Barlow were boyfriends and girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Then Bill came and took her away. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, McDonald had great admiration to Marjorie and to the school. Uh, Marjorie actually used to have the school. Bill was less involved in the school. Yeah. Good. Beautiful. <laughs> With a lot of preparation, you notice. And that's the whole secret. That's what I say to people so many times. Don't go for the movement. Go for the inhibition and direction. The movement is a byproduct. That's right. Of the... Now, Marjorie is going to work for a few minutes with Anne, because it just happened. It's not because uh, we invited her in. And um, I asked her also to talk and to demonstrate what she thinks, what she sees what she is ordering, giving a direction to the people. So I think it's very, very important for all of us to listen to what's happening in this. Yes. Okay, Alicia. Now, Anna, I'm going to ask you to sit down. Your response to that is to say no to yourself. Tell your neck to be free. Look straight ahead. Look at somebody, one of those nice people over there. That's it. That's better. Now, that's a very important thing that FM used to emphasize. When you're working, look at something. In fact, he used to turn us around sometimes in front of a painting. We didn't know why. Then he'd turn us back again and ask us to describe the painting. Mm -hmm. Of course, none of us have been looking at the painting <laughs> at all. We've been looking inside our heads to see which way they would go. A fruitless exercise. <laughs> Now, sit down, she says, no, look, look at something or somebody. That's it, that's it. You see, your eyes were fluttering about until you looked at something. You mustn't mind me saying things like that. We all do it. 
I come back to my arm, put the knees right apart, right apart, right apart. Beautiful. That's good. Now just remember, the shoulders belong in with your back, not with your neck and your arms. That's it. You, you couldn't feel that. It, 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 terrific undoing when I said that. It's a very useful thing to remember. Shoulders belonging with your back, not with your arms or your neck, which is the way we mostly use the shoulders. That's it. Again, neck free, my head forward and up. Don't help me, Pat. Don't help me. That's it. That's it. It's just that little extra bit of helping that people do that ruins it. <laughs> <laughs> now I want you to stand up again. Now my way of teaching, not everybody's way, but it's my way, is to keep on talking to the pupil in terms of the orders. Because what you're trying to do is to link up for the pupil those words with the experiences you're giving them. And a lot of teachers just work with their hands and they don't see to it that the pupil is using his or her brain. Just giving you that for what it's worth. Then three, head forward and up, back to lengthen and widen. It's what Shakespeare said, you know, suit the action to the word, the word to the action. He knew. <laughs> That's it, that's it. You can't feel that, but she's, she's gradually letting it go. I'm just giving her the indication. Do ask the questions, it helps me a lot. Marjorie, which play is that from? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. The, the uh, suit action to the word and the word to the action. Do you know which, which, which play of Shakespeare? It's Hamlet. Ah, right. Hamlet's speech to the play. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alexander questions you all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can say something. It's not a question, it's just uh, adding to what Margaret says. As she said, you might not see it or you might not feel it. Sometimes the difference between proper and improper is so little and so minute that we can't actually see it with the eye. That's right. It's something which is happening inside ourselves. Yes. And only an experienced teacher can really, by putting the hands, be, oh, yeah, that's it. And then that's what we hear when somebody says, that's it, it happens. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very important, you know, to encourage your pupils whenever you can. So what is happening they come in for a terrible lot of criticism all the time. But I'm a great believer in encouraging them, if it's at all possible. Sometimes it isn't. <laughs> there you go. Don't say anything. <laughs> right, now to stand up again. She says, no. My neck to be free. Steady. Don't help me. Head forward. And up. That's it. Now come back. Go straight up and put the knees away. Lovely. Beautiful. Okay, then. I, can, I, can I ask, uh, can I ask if Mar Margaret was really asking, yes. what happened yeah. in Anne when you said, don't tell me? Well, she was, it was very subtle, but she was somehow trying to anticipate what I was going to do. And as I didn't know what I was going to do, how could she know? <laughs> Follow? Because no. I don't know till I do it what I'm going to do. So how can the pupil know? They all try. We all try to get there first. Can I add to it something? Sure. Uh, also, to your question, what's happening with the pupil is when they think, now she's going to take me out of the, of the chair, 
they prepare themselves yes. by putting tension, sometimes in the leg, sometimes in the lower back, sometimes in the shoulders, sometimes in the neck. And that's what we want people to inhibit. Mm -hmm. Yes, she used the legs. It's impossible to get out of the chair without using the legs. That's right. But the question is whether you gave yourself direction first or you didn't. That's it. That's right. I inhibited. Shall I have somebody else? Who wants to come? Can I be? You did. <laughs> do this, he used to come and stand in front of us. So he got what he called a, a total picture. Uh, some people say to me, but doesn't it embarrass them? I say, they still get used to it because I do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> instinctive reaction. And you've got to be as quick as lightning because the reaction is quicker than thought. That's it, that's it. Again. Just let me take you back a tiny fraction. That's it, that's it. That's what I want. Now you're balanced. See, now she's she's sitting there perfectly happily, balanced. Before she was very slightly thrusting her pelvis forward, so that that took away the stability. Any questions? Can I ask a question? Of course. Yeah. I think one of the most difficult things is that you're not doing. Can you hear me? Should I come here? One of the most difficult things is the non-doing. Of course. And they, very often when you suggest to people not to do, they're actually holding yes. or dropping down. How do you deal with it? Well, how do you convince them that they, there is well, whatever? You just say, no, well, that's not it. That's not what I meant. And you just go patiently on until finally the penny drops. <laughs> and meanwhile, many pounds dogs in the I mean, it's sometimes that between not doing as, as the way we understand it or the way we want it. Well, unless it's a very gross thing, you know, something they're doing very obviously, it's very <laughs> internal saying no. It, it's a stopping. There are many layers of doing. And it's like an onion peeling <coughs> off. Peel against onion. That's what it's like. 
And I've been doing this work for over 60 years, nearly 70 now, and I'm still finding out things. I'm still going wrong and noticing that I'm going wrong. So there's no end to it. It's like breathing. You have to go on breathing until you die. And you have to go on doing this work till you die. Same thing. Same difference. Hopefully you're going on breathing. Mm. Hopefully you're going on breathing. Well, yes. <laughs> That's right. Most of the time we're not. Yes, I want to tell you, it was a time that when I heard people saying it, it never ends, you have to learn all your life, each time you learn more and more. And I thought to myself, oh no, you can't to a point that uh, everything is clear to you. <laughs> but I'm telling you now, Marjorie is so right about it. I, each time she is 60, 70, and I'm only 40 years in the other part of business. And I discovered new things, things which I knew. Maybe here I knew them. Yeah. But I, my body didn't know them. Suddenly I said, oh, it's so clear. Oh, now I know what it's about. That's right. Yeah. So take it really seriously. And unfortunately, sometimes we see teachers that they think they became deputy of, of God. <laughs> You still have to learn a lot. Stand up, she says no. My neck free, my head forward and up. And I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to be happy. And I'm going to just put my knees away. Good. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, when you say put your knees away, yes. Um, do you say that with a new pupil? Yes. How? Because it, that's quite a, a difficult thing for them to grasp, isn't it? Because you're not start somewhere. somewhere. Got to start somewhere. And you explain <coughs> that you, you, their habit is to contract the legs into the body and together. So you want them to direct the knee, the knee to go forward from the hip joint and away from the other knee. That's simple, really. Mm -hmm. So you actually do explain it like that. You don't just oh, yes, say oh, yes, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I try and explain everything as I go along. And I start them off at the first lesson. First of all, learning to say no, beginning to learn to say no. And by the end of the lesson, I've taught them what the orders are. They can't use it very much, but at least it's a beginning. And it, from the first lesson, it gets them on the right track. And I do it by when I work a little bit in the chair, just getting them to say no and putting their knees away when I tell them, then I put them down on the couch, making them say no to, I say, now I'm going to move your leg, now I'm going to move your arm, no, and get, get them giving those orders. And I say, now, these orders are meaningless at the moment. But as we work, meaning is going to come into them. And uh, I tell them the story how Alexander discovered the work. It's very important that to give them the background of how it all happened. Otherwise it's a lot of a big look. Okay, somebody else. Marjorie, can I ask you about breathing? <clears throat> you never ask me about breathing, or I'll be able to tell you anything about this as well the matter. I've got a pupil who says that he breathes very shallowly yes. and he's asked if I can give him any specific exercises to do. No. Um, I said my understanding of the technique was that we work with our primary control yes. and that as our chest widens it will make more space for his lungs to work more efficiently. One of the most important things you can teach your pupil is to do the whisper arm. I know a lot of people don't like it. And a lot of people do it in a very exaggerated way. Now, the way I was taught by a friend to do the whisper dog, would you like me to go through? Yeah, yes. 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 yes, Because it is the most valuable thing. The whole of my work with the Shakespeare plays was based on the whisper dog. The whole of my teaching is based on the whisper dog. So, I'll try and demonstrate it. <laughs> There isn't a single cell in your body that isn't altered by 
have a hospital. But none of you will do it. <laughs> Say, perfectly <that's> true. <coughs> Sometimes I don't even get as far as them saying this but are in the first first time we approach it. But it is very, very important. It's a great thing, you know, whenever you're by yourself, you can always be doing a few whisper dance. Why does it matter in company? You've got to think you're mad. You have now three weeks in this holiday to do whisper dance. It's just that when we used to do the McDonald's, he used to say also to put the lips behind the teeth. Do you know it? I know. He made a great fuss about yes, it. He did. Uh, and Evan didn't. didn't. Okay. So I go by FM, although I don't. Yeah, I, just <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to yes, know. No, no, no. It's a very natural thing. Mm -hmm. 
the, the great thing is to get the, the amusement, to get the smile. And then he discovered this way of doing it, which was absolutely natural. And if you really will do it, taking those steps one by one, you won't know yourself after a few weeks, truly. And the great thing is to remember that you're going to be thinking of widening your back as you do it. so much about direction, we give you direction, think about direction. What is these little creatures which you call the direction? <laughs> well, I think the most helpful thing, <laughs> the most helpful thing is to point out that you are giving directions to your body the whole time. And if something happens, you have an accident which interferes with, say, the connection with the brain and that arm, what happens? You can't move the arm. Nothing wrong with the arm, but the connection's been broken. It's like a telephone connection. So, it's a question of these automatic, unconscious or subconscious directions are going the whole time. When you go to sleep, something is still going on keeping your body going, keeping you breathing, and so on, all those automatic things. So it's a question of substituting a conscious command or order for this unconscious one. You see, if you could put into words what we're all doing, stiffen my neck, pull my head back, slump my body down, make as much tension everywhere as I possibly can. And those are the directions we're giving you. Nonsense, you know. But very strong. This is the trouble. And so quick, as I said before, quicker than thought. The moment the idea comes to you to move, that pattern is put into operation. That's where you've got to be very clever cunning, really, to get the inhibition in before you've reacted. At what stage does that happen, that, those, those bad directions? When, when does that happen? I'm particularly interested in this because I work predominantly with very young people. I work yes. with sort of 14 to 18 year olds. Yeah. And it's frightening how many of those are in really bad shape. By that time, um, the worst damage is done. It's terrible. It's I know, terrible. I know. But it's never too late. My oldest pupil was 83 when she started with me. And she was totally crippled with arthritis. 
she was, I can't, I don't want to do it because it's so awful to watch it. But she, her head was right down here somewhere. She couldn't, she had to sort of do that to look up. And she lived about a mile away. She never took the bus. She was 83 years old. And uh, she had, my husband asked me would I take her, so I gave her a lesson. She said, can I have a lesson every day for a month? And she was a wonderful pupil. And after about a couple of months, she was up like me. And the arthritis, she used to wake up every morning with pain, you see, all over her body and in her head. And all that disappeared. 83 years old. Same age as I am. <laughs> I'm 84. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to take again this opportunity that Marjo is here and to just to have your approval or to have your opinion. Uh, last week I, I gave here um, a first lesson demonstration, which really someone who never had lessons. It wasn't a, again, it was a real first lesson. And uh, the way I explain directions is directions, again, I, I think I have to define it. Yeah. Direction is a flow of energy, I told him, which triggered by thinking, by the mind, which causes activity and changes in our body. Now, how can I prove it? And the way I think we can prove it, it's a very physical way. Because if we put, and that's I, uh, I explained to him, electrodes here and the other, and the other side of, of the, is the monitor, we can see the changes. And this is what doc doctors would call, what they call uh, brain waves, we call it direction. This is the flow that's of right. energy. Absolutely. Will right. you agree to explain to people this thing? Absolutely, of course. Because they want to know what is it, what is direction. Yes. You talk about the sun. <laughs> it yes. was time that they didn't understand. They think little creatures coming and go, go and go and go. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, of course, a joke. Um, any other question, really professional question, which <coughs> now we can, can understand, we can, can understand. Could you um, explain what you mean when you say if you can move, you can improve. What, when you talk about Sorry, I didn't hear that. when you talk about improving through movements. Oh yes. What does that mean exactly? Well, Evan used to say, um, if you if you find you suddenly realise you're pulling down, don't try and get it statically. Give yourself a stimulus to move. Inhibit. Wait. And then move. And he used to illustrate this for us by, I'll show you, uh, use this chair. He would um, sit in the chair and pull down. And he said, give myself the stimulus to come forward a tiny bit. So he would do that. A little bit, putting his knees away. And I'll do this rather quickly. He'd take a long time, but gradually, as he moved, so he would come up out of it. It wasn't that he did anything, but the pattern he was activating in his body was a different one to follow. <laughs> so it's quite good that. And we all find ourselves pulling down from time to time, do we not? <laughs> And that's the way to get out of it. Give yourself a stimulus to move. You can do it anywhere. You don't have to be sitting. But it's easier if you're sitting. And it was wonderful to watch Evan coming forward, just a little bit, uh, and, and <coughs> to see him without him doing anything. By the time he got forward, he was right up. When you say give yourself a stimulus, you mean uh, it goes through the whole thing. You say, now I'm going to come forward. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, the whole bit. Yeah. You stop. Yeah. And okay. And then, then you move. Without minding whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, yes, I wanted to ask you um, about taking an arm. Yes. Um, there seem to be two schools of thought on this. With some people uh, who take an arm and the arm sort of float, floats out on its own and, the, and they claim that they are giving their directions. Yes. And the arm is almost pushing against you. And if you were to take your hands away, the arm would stay out there and they would say that they're not doing it, that they're just giving their directions. Other people give the whole weight of the arm yes. and allow the arm to be taken while they passively look after their primary That's control. Right. What's your view on this? Well, the second one is what you should be getting, getting them to stop. You see, it's, it's, the whole difficulty is stopping, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not just reacting. Mm -hmm. That's a, yes? How odd. Can I just ask, why don't we say, <coughs> don't stiffen the neck, don't pull the head back, instead of, why do we say, neck release, neck free? Let, let, let. Let my neck be free. It's a very good question. And if I'm used to say, if you get fed up with giving the orders, put them in the negative. Exactly what he's just said. As I go to do this, I won't stick in my neck, I won't pull my head back, I won't slump my body down. But are they? Isn't there something else when you put it in the positive? If you stop doing the wrong thing, something else comes through that isn't just not doing the old thing. I Sorry, I'm being confusing all the time. I don't time. think I can answer that for you. I, I, if you're, um, it doesn't seem to me to make much difference whether you're giving a positive direction or giving an inhibitory direction, which is what the, I won't do this as I go to room or whatever. If I can add to it also, uh, sometimes you might find yourself need to use don't. It depends on the pupil, it depends on the on the, the mood of you and of your pupil in the same given moment. Sometimes I also find myself telling don't do it. And sometimes I say to him, let it come with me or with this or whatever. So it's not a definite this is the way to do it. You have to be sensitive enough and experienced enough to see what works what attitude you have to use in any given lesson. It's not like putting a machine and do it, say, programming it, this and this and this we do, one, two, three, four. You have to see what is needed in any given moment. Aren't we also, though, aren't we trying to, um, aren't we trying to learn a new habit? And it, isn't it easier to do that if we actually think of a positive a new positive way of going through it, rather than actually saying, I'm not going to do that anymore. Because if you just say, I'm not going to do that anymore, you're not putting anything in its place, are you? Nisha, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you. I want to, I want to hear again the question. <laughs> um, I, I just feel that in, in, in the role as a teacher, you want to put something in the place um, for, the, for the people to learn. And if you say, either to yourself or to your pupil, don't do that, you're not, not actually giving any, any new way of doing it. You're just saying, don't do that old way. No, so you I never that. end with this. I continue, don't do this, stop. Now I'm going to teach you how to do it in a better way. Yeah, that's right. It's, I don't, and we don't do. Don't do in order not to fall to the old bad habits. But now let's go for the new habits, for the new way. Okay. Andrew, let put a question to me the other day, which I thought about, and I've tried to get the answer. Yeah. And he said, when you widen, you automatically lengthen. I think so automatically. Well, you tend the lengthening is coming also. Lengthening is natural. When you open, you tend to lengthen. Yes. But if you lengthen, you don't necessarily open. No, that, this is one of the difficulties. And some people, some schools of thought, get mad on the lengthening and they forget the balance. It's a bit of lengthening. As FM used to say, 
you get a little bit more lengthening, then you get a little bit more wide, then you get a little bit more lengthening. You go mad on the lengthening issue. And there's no balance in that. Can I come back to the question of arms? Yes. Um, because uh, the idea of putting an arm on the back of a chair is actually not to give with the weight of the arm, but to teach people to be able to balance it. Right. Uh, so the whole idea is to be aware of what is a heavy arm, what is not a heavy arm, and yet at the same time not to hold. There is a hell of a difference between holding so that the fix and won't come down, or balancing, and then they will be able to follow you whatever you follow with it. So, yeah. That's right. But you can't yeah. get to that point where you are able to balance it until you have learned what is the way to do nothing, to do not, to do nothing yes. at all. I think it's called, it all goes together, I think. Yeah. Listen, one of the things which I teach you now, putting the hand on the back of the chair, if you remember the four main principles. What, why do we put hand on the back of the chair? What do we learn from putting the hand on the back of the chair? So let me remind you. We learn how to use the arms without interfering with the shoulders. The shoulder, as Mark said, is part of the back. When we lift the arm, we don't lift the head. We choose using the arm. Now, we keep the arm in the air. When we keep the, arm in, the arms in the air, we use to use muscles. It's impossible without muscles. Yeah, right. Now, I say, we have to learn to, to use the right amount of muscular tension in order to keep it in the air. If we do, if we use more, then we are abusing ourselves. If we use less, it will fall. If we want to keep it in the air, we use the right amount of muscular tension. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. Mm -hmm. Now I say also, and at the same time, we have to keep our primary control. And in the same time, we have to learn, as Alexander teacher, and in, actually in any profession, to send this power, this energy from our back, through our arms, through our hands, and to what object we touch, whether we touch the neck, or we touch a violin, or we touch any, any instrument or any, any object. That's right. Does it answer your question? Yeah, and then we I mean, have the arm as actually is, the weight is free here, and it's supported mostly by the back, not by excessive activity here. Hey, with both, with both. No doubt you can stop that. Again, the right amount of muscular tension, yeah. Yeah. Not the right no, not you can hold it in the air and do more. Why? You can just use the right amount of muscle. And it's still free, you see, you can see when I move, you can see that it's a free movement, and you can see that this is not a free movement. <laughs> you can easily see. But the, the, the difficulty comes with pupils is that when they're having to put their hands in the air, particularly the musicians, yeah. and they're having to use quite a lot of force to you know, make a lot of noise or whatever, with a bow in arm particularly, I have to hold that arm high and do a lot with it. And that's when they start looking into all sorts of problems with the shoulders. If you can teach them how to do properly, it's your job. It's as simple as that. Marjorie, could I ask you another question? Sure. I have a pupil who had polio in her leg, where well, one leg as a child. Um, have you worked with people who have had a similar condition and have you any advice to give about working with them? Well, you just work with them and you work with them equally. There's no difference. And gradually, the, any muscles they've still got which are working will begin to be operative. So there's no difference. It doesn't matter what's the matter with them. It's the same. We work with the principles. It's the same. Answer. Would you mind doing hands on the back of a chair? If you don't mind. <laughs> no, I don't mind. I like doing hands on the back of a chair because it's a very good preparation for using your hands on people. Next part. <laughs> Go on, yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now that's out of the way. This first issue is John Ray. Ah. You're beautiful. Yes, that's right. Yes. Well, no, it is. It will sit you down. Just let that go into your back. <laughs> this is a very useful thing. We push everything out in front. But if you say to them, let all that go into your back, that makes a revolution. That's it. There you go. I was doing it while you were talking. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, my hands are freezing. In back, I'll put the knees away. You see, FM used to take people straight down. There is a school, or several schools, where you take them right forward. No right. mentioning which. <laughs> <laughs> you all know. If you look at films of FM working with people in and out of chairs, always uh, straight down, straight up. But you see, to be able to do that, you've got to get a back that's working. This is the preparation for it. And you need to have the legs fairly wide apart. Sorry? You need to have the legs fairly wide apart. You're not too wide apart. We used to say about the width of your hips. Ideally. firmly with straight fingers, he used to say. Hold the wrists in, pull to the elbow, widen the upper part of the arm as you widen the back. Now these are FM's exact words, which over eight years or whatever it was, I heard him say over and over. Hold the chair firmly with straight fingers, that's it. Order the wrists in, pull to the elbow, widen the upper part of the arm as you widen the back. Now I'm going to move that arm. Keep firm with your fingers. Yes. There you go. That's what you want. You want that freedom. You want the freedom in the joints. What, why does the wrist have to go in? Is it different to anything? Don't exaggerate it. See, that looks very nice, the way he is there. Actually, the firm the fingers are, the easier it is to let the joints go. It's just melting, you know. His shoulders are just melting under my hands. That's it. Any questions? Do you ever take the hand out before starting? Sometimes, yes. Mm -hmm. I was rather foreshortening it. Just release your fingers. So at what point would 
you ask the people to take to take care of the way that they're on after they? Yes, when you've got the hands on the uh, on the rail. It's very good, you see. He's he's not making a lot of work, a lot of fuss in his inner arm muscles. Okay. Don't you do it sometimes with a monkey? Oh, yes. So don't think I find that I usually do it with monkey. Yeah. I, I do much less the sitting down one. Mm. Because I think the monkey one is such a more complete thing, really. Maybe we can have a demonstration of the... Maybe we can have a demonstration of arms on the bed for chair with a monkey. You are tired. So I think we shall stop here. We shall stop here. And then uh, uh, I think on behalf of everybody. We want to thank you very much for coming to us and for giving us your very experienced view about uh, about. Uh, yeah. And, 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 yeah. You don't have to believe in what I say. <laughs> <laughs> because everything I'm saying to you, you can either no, prove no, or disprove. Yeah. No, it's not me, it's what you do. Yeah. <coughs> yes, and that's what I wanted exactly to say. And now you go home, each one with his simulation in his mind. Each one of you will be. We see how we work, how you work before, and you'll find your way how to work with people. The important thing is to keep Alexander principles, not dead technicality so much that how you, if you keep the principles of inhibition, of giving direction, and of re reacting to this direction in men. If you do this, you, I don't want you to copy Marjorie, I don't want you to copy me. First of all, it was in art. You cannot copy me, I am what I am, Marjorie is what she is, and you are what you are. So keep the principles and be yourself in the world. Then you're safe. You can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't if you don't keep it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so each one after this will go home and thinking about it. And if, if you want to come and talk about it again, I shall, uh, I shall be very happy and the other teachers too. Mm -hmm try to clarify things to you, and if Marjorie will, will agree to come again to us one day. So, doctor, oh, good. Thank you. I, I write it down, and you are listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was, it was really a very, very nice, uh, very nice day. Um, we still have another week to go until we end the term. And uh, we want to wish Marjorie a Merry Christmas and a very happy, healthy New Year. Thank you very much. And in behalf of the class, I want Thank to be happy. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Who can sort it out here? <laughs> uh, okay, you can sort it out. And meanwhile, I, will, I shall do this. Marjorie, this is for you to put it on the window, in the window, pay window. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you. Just a minute, I haven't finished. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want me to bring it up to your plan. What do you call it?
And again, we wish you all the very, very best. And uh, again, we want to know the secret. Where, where did you find this boy? <laughs> Which dustbin did you give him? <laughs>